Hello everyone. Good evening. Good evening everyone. Can you please confirm in chat if you can hear me and see me? Okay. Fantastic. Welcome to Biotechnica everyone. Good evening and welcome to this webinar on microbiologist and everybody. Today I am joined with an expert from Biocon Academy, a guest speaker as well and I welcome you all I would take I would like to take this opportunity to welcome all of you to this special webinar now in my previous webinars I have always told you we will always keep coming to you with more and more wonderful opportunities for each one of you and I'm really really glad to share with you all today that the Dean of Biocon Academy is live with us and he shall be talking to you all soon in this live broadcast. So getting started with, I have a small introduction to make and after that I'll pass on the controls. Now before I get started just wanted to know like which part of the country you are from and which city and what is the qualification so you can write like MSc Biotechnology Bangalore something like that quickly in chat box so that we can customize this webinar according to your you know um, qualifications okay fantastic we can see that there are people from all across the globe okay fantastic thank you so much everyone so shall we get started okay Perfect. Now, microbiologist in everybody. Free webinar on Biotechnica's YouTube and Facebook Live. Today, I'm so happy to be joined by Mr. S.S. Ishwaran, Academic Dean at Biocon Academy. And in this wonderful 90 minutes, we are going to discuss some very important facts and facets of life sciences and this particular webinar is going to be eye opener. This is going to be a very powerful webinar. So I request to you that please take pen and paper, stop all the distractions. Maybe you can go to a room where there is no TV, no distractions. Okay, fantastic. So why exactly we are conducting this webinar? We decided to conduct this webinar because at Biotechnica, it is our aim and uh, goal to support each one of you, to nurture bio professionals and that is what we do every day, correct? This undying passion and attitude to see you all successful is what motivates all of us at Biotechnica to get up every morning with full power and do things which can help all of you in your career, okay? Whether you are a subscriber, fan, follower, critic, or just a bioprofessional, we are there for you, okay? And with this webinar, we want to reach out to each one of you and tell you that we want to be a partner in your success. We want you to be successful and that is why we come to you with this webinar. Now, since inception, Biotechnica, as you can see, started in the year of 2006, we have been striving hard to cater to the bioprofessional community and students in particular who wish to make a bright career in their life, right? Our mission is Biotechnica revolution, which means, which means we have, we want to create a holistic environment where people, we want to change the way people read, understand or interpret biosciences. We want to create a community of holistic individuals who can, for that matter, take our mission forward. 
our vision is to support each one of you our vision is to reach out to every bio professional and support him or her in their career and we have been constantly doing that for past 13 years and we'll continue doing that and today that is why that is why we come to you with this latest webinar in microbiologist in everybody okay now this webinar i am very happy to be joined by mr ss ishwaran who is going to talk in detail but before we get started i have a small request as you can see on your screen right now i want you all i want you all to go ahead and share this webinar on all your social media platforms whether you are on whatsapp facebook instagram telegram wherever you are go ahead and share the link tell your colleagues and friends that there is a webinar live webinar happening right now go and attend okay ha use the hashtag biotechnica use the hashtag biocon academy and use the hashtag proud bio professional i want you all to be proud of yourself if you are proud of yourself then go and share this link tell the world that there is a live broadcast happening for all the bio professionals of this country and they all must come together to join hands to win can we have have that yes okay i can see a lot of yes fantastic now don't forget to tag biotechnica don't forget to tag biotechnica as well as biocon academy in your um, facebook and instagram shares okay and let us join hands let us join hands to create this biotechnica revolution which we have always dreamed of which we want to do okay let this lockdown and unlock india become a milestone for bio professionals can we do that can you can you all share this video with all your friends okay fantastic great thank you thank you so much so let's do do this guys for the next one hour every bio professional in this country must be attending this webinar and you can make that happen tell your friends that biotechnica and biocon academy have come together for this webinar on microbiologist and everybody tell everyone okay fantastic now let's come to today's topic biocon biocon who doesn't know biocon limited democratized biopharmaceuticals am i right the visionary leader whose photo you can see on the screen right now dr kiran majundar shaw she created a organization which is enabling success and enabling access democratizing biopharmaceuticals creating a place where people can go work and also grow and also in create products which can cater to markets which are poor as well as rich she was a visionary then and she is a visionary now biocon academy is one of her vision inspired by her thought process biocon academy was created and it's a corporate social initiative by biocon which is committed to create a biotech ecosystem in india where skills could be developed where freshers are no longer freshers they are skilled freshers okay where uh, a center of excellence could be created and this particular i'm proud to tell you biocon academy is right here in bangalore in the biocon house they have a lot of courses and then they have a lot of support systems for young professionals like you they leverage the rich industry experience which biocon has and then they have also partnered with various organizations like kek uh, uh, graduate institute california as well as various other universities in india like bits pilani and they've come out with industry oriented courses which will benefit students like you now the programs offered here empower the biotechnology and engineering graduates with advanced learning and industrial proficiency now when we see people who get into uh, the companies they just come out of college they lack skills and that is where again biotechnica as well as biocon academy we are committed to help all of you using our courses now coming to today's speaker a very good friend of mine Mr S S Ishwaran a microbiologist by training he is the academic dean of Biocon Academy uh, 
He has been instrumental in uh, identification and development of training courses at Biocon Academy along with the other director, uh, Mrs. Bindu Ajit. And he also is the interface between the faculty and the students and the subject matter expert. And he bridges the gap and he is the true pioneer, true leader of biotech industry who has helped a lot of students transition into bioprofessional. Okay, so I'm really happy to have Mr. SS Ishwaran with us today live, and he'll be talking to you in detail on this topic microbiologist in you. Now, about this webinar, since coronavirus outbreak uh, happened, the role of microbiologist has become even more predictable, significant, whatever you call it. You know, every common man today okay knows the basic microbiology terms okay whether it is quarantine whether it is um, you know a mask whatever so they know it right the time has come to encourage and nurture and support bioprofessionals and microbiologists like you and that is why we invited the dean of biocon academy to give a talk on microbiologist in you so now i would like to pass on the controls to our speaker of the day but before we get started you know what i want you to type please type bring it on bio in the chat box are you ready are you ready okay bring it on bio in the chat box okay fantastic show the enthusiasm guys that will help you know make this webinar more, much more energetic yes i can see a lot of bio fantastic okay passing on the controls to dr ishwar Hello everyone. Uh, how are you doing in this uh, COVID situation? I'm sure all of you are uh, staying safe in your uh, places of living and uh, staying and maintaining the social distancing now. Uh, the reason why we specifically uh, wanted to talk about microbiologists in everybody uh, in this evening uh, is to uh, see so how best we are understanding the uh, microbiology as a subject and who is the microbiologist. So first of all, I would like to ask you a few questions. Uh, before we go into the questions, I would like to mention that we will keep all the questions and answers to the uh, end of the session. Once the session is completed, either you can drop your questions in your chat box or uh, you can directly ask the question. Then we can uh, respond to these questions. Now, there are some uh, terms that will appear in your screen. Uh, find out if you are familiar with these terms. The term number one, virus. Yes, are you familiar? Of course, by now, you would have got completely familiar with the term virus. Nose mask. Yes, I don't know how many of you still have nose mask when you are listening to the session also. But now we are very familiar with this term, nose mask. Disinfectant, yes. Droplet infection. Now you started hearing about this term in the uh, news, in the newspapers. You started reading, hearing, and seeing this term. Droplet infection, yes. Quarantine, yes. I wish nobody would have uh, gone through this, but it is a very common term now. Uh, the term quarantine. Because if you enter from one zone to another zone, which is not a common zone between two of that, then you are quarantined for 14 days uh, before you are allowed into the particular zone. So now the term quarantine has become a very uh, common term. Right? Hand sanitizer. Yes, they're not only familiar, but also using uh, the hand sanitizer day in and day out. Right? Pandemic. Uh, when we are watching the uh, television, this term has become a very, very common term, very commonly used to term, this pandemic uh, disease and pandemic. So uh, the term pandemic uh, has become a very uh, common term uh, and because now the term has been used uh, in the uh, newspaper, in the uh, television and in any form of communication because of the coronavirus situation. So I would like to ask you the question, if you are familiar with all these terminologies, 
uh, are you a, a common man or are you a microbiologist? If you are familiar with all these terminologies, I'm sure I can call you as a microbiologist because generally the microbiologists are the ones who are dealing with microorganisms, including bacteria, viruses, etc. When they are handling these microorganisms, they use personal protective equipment like nose mask. I don't know how many of you are aware that the nose mask has, is coming under the category called as personal protective equipment, right? It is a PPE. Now it has become very common, even now it is available in the regular medical shop, right? When they are handling the microorganisms, they use it to disinfect the surface before they start up their work. The reason why they want to disinfect the, disinfect, disinfect the place before they start the work is to make sure that the infecting microorganisms or any microorganism which they are handling is not dropping onto the table and enters into the nasal cavity due to the droplet infection. So they are wearing a nose mask. Quarantine. Generally, when the sample, if it is contaminated by microorganisms, then we keep the sample aside to just make sure that the sample is not mixing up with any of the good products. This is what the actual meaning of quarantine in the scientific community, hand sanitizer. But I know you all know very well that the hand sanitizer, the function of the hand sanitizer is to reduce the number of microorganisms. Please remember it is not sterilization, we are talking about sanitization, which means we are only reducing the number of microorganisms. We are not completely eliminating the microorganisms from the hand or whichever surface we are talking about. Pandemic. This is a very interesting terminology because earlier we have been very familiar with the term epidemic or endemic, which is the, the set of uh, uh, diseases that spread within a community or across the community, but not pan continents. Then you call it as a pandemic uh, disease or pandemic infection. So now we all are in agreement that no one of us are not or is not a microbiologist. All of us are microbiologists because it's just about self-realization. The reason why I uh, use the term self-realization is because the term uh, living in relationship is a quite a new term or relatively a new term for people like me who belong to little old generation. Uh, okay, but uh, the understanding of uh, living in relationship uh, was very well established for people like us because of the understanding about how microorganisms live in relationship with the human body. As you can see here, the microbial cells are about 100 trillion in comparison to 30 trillion human cells. Now we need to really think who is living in relationship with whom? Who is minority in whom? Who is carrying whom? Right? So basically, uh, living in relationship is a very nice terminology for us to understand the nice relationship between the microorganisms and the human cells. Because as you can see here, when the microbial cells are both in nature and we are still sustaining our livelihood, which clearly means that not all microorganisms are contagious, not all microorganisms are bad, not all microorganisms will cause infection. There are a lot of microorganisms which are actually beneficial. These microorganisms are on our body and in our body, which means it is present outside our body, on the surface of our, uh, of our body, and as well as inside our body. So that is why we use the term uh, live in relationship with microorganisms. Now, as you can see here, the microbiota. The microbiota is nothing but the sum total of different types of microorganisms. What is the role they play in the human being in terms of development and sustenance? As you could see here, the early gut microflora is very, very important for the development of the human being and its normal functioning. I will take this development in three perspectives. One, development of defense mechanism. Two, development of tolerance and the other uh, general metabolic uh, activities, including the gut brain, crosstalk, and digestion and absorption. When you say defense, it is very, very important for all of us to know that the microorganisms play a very, very vital role, not only in development of 
the immune system in the uh, human being. When I say immune system, it means the system in our human body that protects the body from the invading microorganism and causing disease. So this is the immune system. How this immune system is developed is because of the presence of the microorganism itself. Okay. So these microorganisms are the native microorganisms or common cell microorganisms which live on our body and in our body is responsible for differentiation of the new or antigenic microorganisms and the existing microorganisms. That is how the immune system develops. We'll get into details uh, in the next uh, slides. However, it is not only about microorganisms, but also a lot of compounds that are produced as a byproduct of the microorganisms, which are essentially play a vital role in development of tolerance to very different substances that generally come into the human body through the food and feeding habits. Maybe, for example, uh, the fish or milk or egg or peanuts or whatever. And another interesting phenomenon that is happening is the gut brain cross A lot of times uh, we really do not realize that the mood swing or the anxiety or the way certain times we behave in certain conditions. It is moderated, it is controlled, it is mediated, it is influenced by microorganisms. For example, let's say the uh, state of mood, the state of pain, all these are different ways in which we handle the situation and it is mediated by microorganisms, particularly the gut microorganisms. When I say gut, I am talking about the entire digestive system, starting from the mouth, the esophagus the stomach, the small intestine, and the large intestine. So all together, the gut microflora it plays a vital role in terms of our general mood and the behavior. There are a lot of microorganisms in the body which are involved in the metabolism of complex material which we eat. It is very surprising to know that the human body is not capable of digesting a lot of things which we actually eat. For example, let's say certain proteins, certain carbohydrates, certain lipids, these are the uh, compounds which are actually cannot be digested by the human body or the human cells itself or the human organ itself without the help of the microorganisms. The microorganisms play a very vital role in converting these complex substances to simpler substances and these simpler substances are absorbed by the human body and metabolized. So to get into a little more details on each of this, first I would like to talk about the uh, gut brain crosstalk. When I say crosstalk, it is not only one sided, it is a bilateral, it is a, a mutual uh, communication that happens between brain and the gut microflora. As you can uh, see here, the neural function and the endocrine function play a vital role in communicating or affecting the growth and the metabolism of the microorganisms in the gut through the efferent nerves or the neurotransmitters like acetylcholine, or it is through the endocrine system through, for example, the hypothalamus pituitary and adrenal axis, or it is a polypeptide chain. So through these compounds, the brain affects or controls the way the microorganisms grow and multiply and function in the gut, number one. And the vice versa, the neural functions, for example, let's say the vagal nerve. Vagal nerve is a very, very important nerve that conducts the sensory impulses from the internal organ to the brain. Now, when I say internal organ, these internal organs are completely uh, containing the microorganisms. Let's say gut, this gut microorganism. So what are the secondary metabolites produced by the gut microflora, which can be a neuro or immunomodulatory substances that can act locally on the immune population or it can enter into the endocrine cells. This is exactly how the conduction happens by the vagal nerve to the brain through the neurotransmitters and the immunomodulatory substances produced by the microorganisms in the gut. Then you have uh, the impact of this communication in terms of uh, altering the mood, the behavior, and the neuroinflammatory responses, how the body responds to different inflammatory situations. So 
it is very uh, interesting to note the microorganisms play a vital role in having a control over or modulating the functioning of the central nervous system of the human being. So, second thing I want to take an example of uh, the microorganisms in development of our uh, defense mechanism uh, to elucidate the fact of how the microorganisms impact the human uh, development and function. As I was telling you, the microbiota from outside as well as from inside are exposed to the immune cells during the development, which means these are the microorganisms which are exposed to our lymphocytes which are actually producing the antibody, then the antigen comes from outside, which means the body should clearly distinguish what are the microorganisms which are already present in our body and what are the microorganisms that are coming out from external environment into the body to create a disease. So this differentiation happens because of the presence of the microbiota in our system. So the microbiota is not only responsible for the development of the immune system, and the functioning of the immune system, but also the functional tuning of the entire system happens because of the microbiota. Now, it is very important for us to understand this because as a human being, we can utilize this mechanism of the modulation of the immune system using microbiota to actually treat a lot of diseases such as inflammatory diseases or autoimmune diseases, hypersensitivity, that is allergy, cancer, dysbiosis. Dysbiosis means change in the balance of the microbiota and the opportunistic infection. There are a lot of research actually gone by to understand how effectively we can use the microbiota to treat certain diseases. I would like you to watch a one minute video uh, to understand how actually this uh, functions. I'm trying to Okay. Uh, before that, uh, I would like to uh, share a little more uh, uh, information about how the dynamics of the microbiota works with the aging process. For us to understand how the microorganisms actually play a role in the development of the human being, starting from fetus up to the old age. For us to understand this, I would like to introduce four terminologies. Terminology number one, firmicutes. The firmicutes are the uh, very important phylum. Most of them are gram-positive cell walls. This is a little more a microbiological term, but for us to easily understand, generally the bacteria are divided into gram-positive bacteria and gram-negative bacteria. From this sense, if you can understand, it will be very easy. So the firmicutes predominantly has gram-positive bacteria, Bacteroidal is primarily composed of gram-negative organisms, particularly non-spore forming anaerobic and facultatively anaerobic organisms. Actin bacteria. This is very, very important group of uh, bacteria. One bacteria, I will take an example, as streptomyces. This one bacteria in the human body, which is living as a common cell or a uh, guest, so to say, is uh, important in formation of medicine such as antibacterials, antifungals, antivirals, immunomodifying substances, anti-tumor substances, and the enzyme inhibitors, which means these are the types of compounds these streptomyces produce as a byproduct of their own metabolism. And proteobacteria is a major group of gram-negative bacteria primarily involved in the breaking down of the sugars because it is present primarily in the gut of the uh, human being. Like, for example, E. coli or Salmonella or Vibrio, Helicobacter, and so on. But please remember, these proteobacteria are the group which encompasses some of the pathogenic organisms also, which means these are the organisms which can potentially cause a disease given an opportunity. That's why they are called as the opportunistic pathogen. As you can see here, interestingly, with the 16S RNA technology or a DNA sequencing technology, now we are able to clearly figure out how the microbial community dominates in each age group when the human being is growing from the newborn to an elderly. As you can see here, the role of 
plenitude is kind of predominant because these are the organisms which are very very important for conversion of part of compounds which are taken as a part of our food and the second major portion or second major uh, activity is the activity by the bacteroids the bacteroids are very very important because these are the organisms are responsible for the metabolism of the complex sugars and fatty acids and proteins etc the actinobacteria as you can see here this is the actinobacteria uh, uh, color if you can see the third one the actinobacteria play a very very vital role starting from your newborn gradually it reduces because the uh, young people are very uh, strong and their immune system is very strong there is no need for a supplementation of compounds produced by actinobacteria but in obese conditions and in old age as you can see here the community dominance of actinobacteria takes into play because it is very necessary for the body to produce the compounds to maintain its stability so this is the dynamic microbiota with respect to aging how it makes a interplay now we have understood uh, the role of microorganisms in the human body now as a human being as a smart species on the earth it is very important for us to understand how to actually keep the healthy relationship with the microbiome so i would like to propose three strategies for uh, maintaining healthy microbiome strategy number 1 protect your microbiome strategy number 2 reduce unwanted microorganisms strategy number 3 replenish beneficial bacteria i will tell you there are cases uh, during the uh, human life that we lose lot of beneficial microorganisms so we need to understand how to replenish the beneficial microbiome so this is three strategies protect reduce and replenish let's talk about the strategy number one protect your microbiome how to protect your microbiome as all of us can easily uh, imagine the first and foremost thing that impacts the microorganisms that are present inside our body is what we take through our mouth or what we take through our ingestion when i say ingestion it can be a oral ingestion or it can be a uh, injection given to the uh, system so particularly antibiotics we have to be very very careful with these antibiotics unless and otherwise necessary we should not use the antibiotics the reason being the antibiotics are not only potential of killing the disease causing microorganism but unfortunately it will kill all the beneficial organism belonging to the similar group of bacteria or any microorganism for example let us say if a person is suffering from a throat infection the throat infection is medically categorized as low respiratory tract infection when it's a lower respiratory tract infection starting from the bronchi all the way up to the lower bronchi so if there is a lower respiratory tract infection the uh, you are suffering from a throat infection so to speak so when you are suffering from throat infection if you are taking a self medication which means if you are not consulting a doctor and you are taking a medication it is very very dangerous the reason being it is not only that it is just giving a very temporary release by Uh, temporary effect by chance but also it is creating the potential for the microorganism to stand resistant to other antibacterial bacteria which are going to take now even then if you are going to a doctor for example let's say you have a fever you have a sore throat you have pain in the throat whenever you are swallowing saliva you can clearly feel the pain with these symptoms when you go to your doctor the doctor will generally first check and they will prescribe you an antibiotic first and foremost we need to understand that is not the right practice i am not saying what the doctor is doing is not right please remember the doctors are prescribing the medicine based on the wisdom of their experience i will also tell you how to go about methodically methodic to how to go about or as a microbiologist how what we should understand is how to actually approach this lower respiratory infection once you go to the doctor and tell the symptoms 
the bot the doctor is actually suspecting a lower respiratory infection, which means he is not confirming that. For him to confirm that it is a lower respiratory infection, he has to take a sample, a swab sample from your throat and then grow the microorganism and purify the microorganism and identify the bacteria which is actually causing the infection. Once the bacteria is identified, then this bacteria is grown along with the antibiotic. As you can see here, there is a disc, a white color surface. This is the disc. This disc is impregnated with one uh, antibiotic. The other one is uh, impregnated or it is dosed with another antibiotic. Now, these bacteria are to be grown along with the disc. When it is grown along with the disc, after 48 hours, you will see exactly how it is shown in the picture, which means that there is an inhibition of the growth, which means the bacteria is not able to grow near the disc because the antibiotic is diffusing into the medium. It is preventing the bacteria to grow. Now, based on the diameter of the circle, we will get to know which one is the most potent antibiotic for the given infection. This is how the uh, antibiotic should be chosen to treat a particular infection. Now, if we can see this way, we are reducing the possibility of a general antibiotic or a broad spectrum, spectrum antibiotic being given. The risk of broad spectrum antibiotic is that it will not only affect the uh, growth and multiplication of the disease causing bacteria, but also it will feed the beneficial bacteria. So, Please do not take antibiotic unless and otherwise it is necessary. No self-medication. Even if you are going to consult a doctor, if possible, please request the doctor to do a test and understand which is the most suitable antibiotic to be used for the treatment before it is given to you. Because there is no point of you using three, uh, three days of the antibiotic and after three days you go back to the doctor saying that this antibiotic is not working for us. Right? So that is how we protect the microbiome. The second one, the preservatives. There are lots of preservatives used in the food which we are uh, consuming. Not only the food, the medicines that you consume will also have preservatives. Most of the multi-dose uh, formulations, medicines, will have a preservative. As you can imagine, the whole idea of preservative is to prevent the medicine or the food from the contamination by the bacteria or to prevent the bacteria to multiply in the food. So as you can clearly uh, see the point, when you take the food along with this preservative, these preservatives go into the human system. As the preservative is antibacterial, it will act against the normal bacteria which is present in your gut. Now it is needless for me to say how important the gut microbiota is in the development of human system, which we have discussed already. So we need to protect our own microbiome, but by avoiding taking food with preservatives. Next, the processed foods. Like preservatives in processed food also, lot of salts are used. Generally, a potassium salt or sodium salt is being used, or it can be benzoates that are used, or propagants that are used. So either it is a medicine or it is a food. If it is a processed food, it is very harsh to the microorganisms which is present inside the human gut. So this is how you need to approach how to strategize to protect the microbiome in you so that you have a homeostasis with them or a cardinal relationship with them. The second uh, strategy, how to uh, reduce the unwanted microorganisms. How to reduce the unwanted microorganisms? First, self hygiene. When I say self hygiene, now it is needless to say how to actually uh, be hygienic. When I'm saying self hygiene, it is not only about keeping ourselves clean. We are not talking only about the hand wash. Okay? So when I say self hygiene, it is all about keeping or conducting or uh, carrying ourselves healthy. It is about the you know, cleaning of the hand, it is about washing the hand, it is about taking bath, it is about wearing a clean cloth, etc. Everything comes under the self-hygiene. Second, socially responsible behavior. 
now we are talking about social distancing in country like india it is very very difficult for us to understand the term uh, social distancing because from culture perspective we are not uh, brought up in that way we are all brought up in a way that we are in a crowded uh, place so social distancing is really relatively a new phenomenon if we have to learn social distancing and we need to learn socially responsible behavior when i say socially responsible behavior maybe for example when we are sneezing so far we are not paid attention but now covid has really taught us a lesson even when you sneeze we all now know it can spread a disease causing organism not essentially a coronavirus but it can be a normal influenza virus so now we have a clarity how the droplet infection spreads just by talking or just by sneezing and third sanitization the next is sanitization it is not only about the hands it is about the surfaces wherever you are physically accessing it can be your work table or it can be a kitchen or it can be a door handle wherever which is a portion of the place which is frequently accessed by your hand it is very important that you start to have to go through sanitization generally sanitization is a very common procedure in the industry but now it has become very much domiciled or domesticated it has come to our home now come to the uh, third strategy the third strategy is replenish the beneficial microbiota as i was mentioning to you we have seen the impact or how the microorganisms are getting impacted because of antibiotics or because of uh, uh, say for example preservatives or harsh conditions and so on now it is very important for us to understand how to replenish them the term probiotic is uh, becoming very common place now but when it comes to the microbiology we use the term called as consortium of organisms consortium means it is not a single microorganism it is multiple microorganisms now probiotic is nothing but a set of microorganisms which has beneficial effect in micro in uh, human being which can be used to replace whatever microbes that are being lost as you can imagine when you are going through some of the antibiotic treatment or anti inflammatory treatment nowadays the doctors are suggesting you a sachet or a tablet which contains lactobacillus this lactobacillus is a beneficial bacteria which you are trying to replace because you are sure that because of the treatment you are actually going to lose some of the beneficial organisms it is not only about lactobacillus i have taken the example of lactobacillus because there are a lot of studies done on lactobacillus as you can see here in japan they have done a study when it comes to an outbreak of a virus infection in the old age people when they are allowed to take a lactobacillus based strain fermented milk fermented milk is nothing but a curd the fermented milk is nothing but a curd or a butter milk you can say that so when those people are asked to take a lactobacillus containing curd or butter milk or if you will uh, the actual the gastroenteritis gastroenteritis means inflammatory reaction associated with the gut it is actually reduced the amount of time the people who have gone through fever has actually come down it clearly states that the additional microorganisms the beneficial microorganisms in the body which are replenished from outside is playing a role in creating a homeostasis in the body so the underlying mechanism of the probiotic health benefits modulating the gut microbiota uh, actually is posing lot of clues or providing lot of clues in terms of promoting the intestinal barrier function as well as to promote the mucosal immunity so these are the three strategies we can look into as human beings to uh, work smartly with the microorganisms and so to call our guest or 
the coexisting organisms, the microbiome. Now, to conclude, what I'd like to mention is that it is all about self realization. All of us know about our body, but now we have to look into our own body in a different sense, in a different light of wisdom, a different light of knowledge, because body. It is a coexistence. We are carrying so much of microorganisms. So all of us are microbiologists by design. As long as you are realizing you have more microorganisms than human cells. It is very important to know that it is an ecosystem. When it is an ecosystem, you cannot have your own way of working. It is very important that you have to work together. We have to create a symbiosis. Okay? We need to actually understand the role of the microorganism and to keep the beneficial balance. We are of your partner. Know about your partner. Knowledge about the microorganisms and the strategies to live with the microorganisms. Pave a way to a very healthy company which we can strike with the microorganisms in our bodies. All of us are microbiologists. We are not alone. We are with microorganisms. Thank you very much for your uh, patient listening. And I would like to take a few uh, minutes to uh, speak about the company which I am representing. Biocon Academy is an uh, arm of uh, Biocon Limited Bangalore. It is a corporate social responsibility arm of uh, Biocon Limited. And we are offering short-term certificate courses which enable the students to gain meaningful employment. For us to deliver these short-term uh, courses, we follow this model. We follow a theory, we offer a theory, we generally partner with some of the educational organizations. We work with the education partner. For example, let's say we work with the Tech Graduate Institute California, and we are offering two programs, Biosciences and Clinical Development. Biosciences for biotechnology and bioscience students. Clinical Development is for pharmacy and bioscience students. We are also offering a program in collaboration with Bits Pilani. This is in the area of applied industrial microbiology to gain entry into quality control microbiology or any of the microbiological areas where we find application of microorganisms. Then we have we are offering a course in collaboration with MS Ramaya. This is uh, in relation to quality control analytical. Analytical quality control revolving around the quality control function. And on all these batches, as you can see here, biosync. 16 batches we have completed. In uh, clinical development, two batches we have completed. Microbiology, six batches we have completed. In QCA, one batch we have completed. And the track record has been 100 placement, 100 percent placement all across the courses. Which means not even one student is left unemployed. Whatever the course, what they have taken at by We are also offering a course. For the faculty of uh, colleges and universities who teach microbiology, biotechnology, etc., this is a two weeks program specifically aimed for the faculty to enhance their pedagogical skills. This is from the education partner perspective. The other portion is the experiential learning, which means the theory happens in the morning. In every course, the theory happens in the morning and in the afternoon. The participants will go into Biocon and Syngene or Syngene based upon the type of the course and they will actually shadow the employees to understand how the principles of science, what they study in the morning, the applications, uh, what they uh, study in the morning, how it is applied in the industry in the afternoon. The third component is the hands-on learning. As you can imagine, we cannot allow the participants to touch and do anything at Biocon or Sinji because they are not qualified to do that uh, at this stage. So we are uh, collaborating with companies like Biosy, Thermo Fisher, and Narayana Hrdayalaya to offer hands-on training where they actually dirty their hands and learn it completely. May it be a fermenter, may it be a GC, may it be a HPLC, or may it be a how to write uh, clinical research forms here. Yeah. So, in all the segments, we are providing hands on training. And it is also important that, as good as the technical knowledge, the professional skills is also to be developed. 
because it is very important for each candidate to understand and to develop the skill of articulating the thoughts to the words. So what they think and what they talk to have a simple thing. So this is developed uh, through the professional skills training. It is not only about communication, we also train them in the areas of how to actually manage their time, how to work in teams, etc. So that they start, they can start their project like very smoothly and easily. So for which we are collaborating with uh, Ramanan and Co. Uh, we have an internal communication coach who is actually monitoring the development on a day-to-day -day basis and helping the students to on their professional skills. We are also offering a detailed design thinking training through our courses because this is one of the requirements of the industry in the current situation because it is very important for us to understand that the design thinking gives an overall view or a system view of approaching the applications of the sciences and the troubleshooting them. So we are offering a design thinking course as a part of the curriculum system. So this is the model which we are following and with this model, we are placing students in these companies. Uh, as you can see here, most of the well-known companies are in the panel of the recruitment with Viacom Academy. I'm very glad to uh, tell you that all these companies are actually benefited by taking our students because the value add the students bring onto the table is really very good in terms of having an overall process knowledge, number one, number two, the need for the time to be spent on these students to train them is really very less than compared to any other candidate. So this is exactly what we are doing at Viacom Academy. And for more information, you can check the website viaconacademy.com. If you have any questions, you can reach out to admissions at the rate viaconacademy.com or feel free to call in our mobile that is 2848-9989. Thank you very much once again for your uh, listening. If you have any questions, please do put it in the chat box or you can ask your questions. We are open to take your questions and to interact with you. Thank you very much. All right. So how was the webinar, guys? Please give me your feedback. Did you enjoy the webinar? Did you learn new things? Right? Okay, fantastic. Thanks a lot for your feedback. Now we will be sharing one feedback link in the comment box, in the chat box. Please click on that, fill the feedback form, share your feedback, let us know how we can improve because your feedback matters. Okay. And don't forget to enter the correct email ID because you, you'll be getting the e-certificates only to those email ID. Okay. Now, do not forget to share this webinar video with all your friends, okay, with all your relatives, all your colleagues, all your bioprofessional friends, do not forget to, you know, uh, share this video, like and subscribe, subscribe to our channel so that in future we'll keep coming with more such videos. And yes, if you can comment below this video, how you like, did you like this video, then it will encourage our future speakers also to come on via Technica's platform and share their thoughts and help you all. Now, the entire aim of this webinar was to project you, to support you and to project you all as a brand. Okay. And that is what is the entire aim. I hope you uh, understood our aim and our vision. Now coming to the e-certificates for all the participants. These certificates will be given to only those who attend this, who attended this webinar till now, till the end. Okay, so you must fill the feedback form. The link is given in the description as well as it is on the screen. Okay, now enter your correct email ID and no request for e-certificates will be entertained after the webinar ends. Like we'll give you at least two hours time. So from now, the next two hours time, you can fill the form. Okay, and uh, uh, your e-certificates will be emailed to you. It will be signed by the program director of Viacon as well as me. And we will send back to you as a PDF. Okay. Uh, it's a secure PDF, which we'll send you. Okay. No request for e-certificate will be entertained after two hours of this webinar. So please make sure that you have filled the feedback form in the next two hours. Okay. So with this, we come to an end and I have a special message for all of you. You all do not constitute hundred percent of earth, but you are the only people who can save 
you are the only people who can save 100% of earth you are the savior you are the warrior you are the hope you are the 100% hope of earth you are a bio professional be proud to be a bio professional and thank you thank you for attending this webinar it was a pleasure talking to all of you and see you soon in our, in our next webinar now if you can share with all your friends and all of them uh, like it if you can comment below in the below the video about your thoughts about this webinar that will uh, you know encourage future speakers at biotechnica to come out and give their thoughts share more thoughts with all of you so if you want more web such webinars to come please comment below this video thank you so much and good night If you have ever thought about making a career in biotechnology and applied biosciences, then this is for you. Because your future is in the making right here. Presenting the Pioneers. With a commitment to create a globally competitive biotech ecosystem in India through skill development, Biocon Limited started Biocon Academy a center of excellence for advanced learning in applied biosciences in 2013 as a CSR initiative of Biocon. I think the Biocon Academy has served a very, very important purpose and a very, very big unmet need in the biotech industry in India. I think the biotech sector in India is gaining significantly through these efforts and I'm really pleased that what we started off and envisioned as an important finishing school that will expand the talent pool for life scientists and bioscientists in this country is actually proving to be true. That Biocon as a pioneer is also playing a very, very important role and a very responsible role at that in terms of making sure that the talent pool doesn't shrink. The transformation of the academic knowledge to industry skills requires development of application know-how and an in-depth understanding of technology and regulations. With a broad-based international curriculum, Biocon Academy's flagship program, Biocon KGI Program in Biosciences with Keck Graduate Institute, California, is a best-in-class program that transforms graduate and postgraduate students into industry-ready professionals. This is one of the most sought after courses in biosciences. The way of education there is very different from that is, which is provided in India because it is more application oriented. They start with quiz, they have to read their lessons. There is a lot of videos that they have to look into. That is the first reason. The second reason is the functional visits which is provided by Biocon. This gives them an idea onto whatever they are learning in the theory, how is it actually getting applied in the industry. The third reason is the practicals that they get to do. But that's what entrepreneurism is about. It's taking the vision, looking forward and saying, what can we do by working together? And having done that with a fabulous team, with the support of Biocon, with the KGI faculty in California being so dedicated to your success, being able to be adaptable and trying to work around the difficulties and come through with a program, Biocon Academy has successfully completed six batches of this program. Let's hear from the students as to how the biosciences program helped in unlocking their potential for excellence in biotechnology. Before I joined uh, Biocon Academy, I think I called myself naive. Uh, I thought what I study in the lab is exactly what I'm, I'll be doing in the industry. It's only after I came to Biocon Academy that I realized through the functional visit that uh, the applications of what I studied in college are completely different and that what I'm going to do uh, once I do get on with my new job is something totally different. The Biosciences program at Biocon Academy provides us the opportunity to study under international industry experts. All of us who did the Biocon KGI certificate program in applied biosciences have got 100% placement across leading companies in the biopharma sector.
The success of the Biosciences program stimulated us to partner with KGI for a management course in Biosciences for experienced professionals aimed at bridging the gap between their core competency and the business acumen to attain leadership excellence. The 20 member team which went through this course for 16 weeks came out with a huge amount of appreciation for the content and the way the, the entire pedagogy happened. And, uh, you know, we can see the difference post them completing the course in terms of their confidence levels and in terms of how they are contributing to the company. This is one of the first courses of its kind in India. So we are trying to make it as relevant to the industry as possible. Um, what I got out of it was kind of a big picture view of um, how this uh, industry of ours is growing, um, where it is going. Um, and it was definitely relevant for me because uh, as a manager or as a program manager in the biosimilars field, um, it's always important to see what the rest of the world is doing to make sure that we're on par with them um, and also what we can do to go the next step um, and keep pushing our company to kind of be in that front line with all the major players in the market. Biocon Academy continued being a pioneer by creating the first of its kind BITS Biocon Certificate Program in Microbiology. Equipped with this eight-week full-time certificate program in microbiology, delivered through renowned faculty from BITS and Biocon Academy, the students are ready to take on the industry and enhance standards and inculcate the application know-how of various techniques used in microbiological analysis. I would like to share my personal feeling on this course. Made me industry ready to take on the challenges posed by biopharma industry. This course has given a great kickstart to me in my career. It helped actually to bridge the gap between the pressure and the industry itself. The result of this course is right in front of you. Now I'm a part of Biocon. Join Biocon Academy in wishing the best to the pioneers of tomorrow. This is just the beginning. You are a star in the making, a star for tomorrow. Make it big, shine on. Biocon Academy, adding value, enhancing skills. Thank you.